Welcome back to Ozarks Tonight. Well, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since Springfield native Payne Stewart won the 1999 U.S. Open. 20 years, and then just a couple months later after that, uh, his untimely death from a plane crash. So today we're bringing in Jim Connell with 417 Sports and the sports editor of the Branson Tri-Lakes News to talk about Payne's historic win 20 years ago. Jim, thanks for being here. Uh, what were you know some of your takeaways? What are some of your memories uh, from that tournament at uh, Pinehurst number two all those years ago? Well, first off, I was kind of like you. I can't believe it was 20 years ago mm -hmm. now. And uh, doing the math, it was just kind of blew my mind a little bit. Uh, I remember that, that week, uh, well, the year before, actually, well, he was at uh, the Olympic Club in mm -hmm. San Francisco, and he finished second, had kind of a bad break with a lie in the fairway, and uh, finished, I believe, one shot behind Lee Jansen. Um, so, I mean, that was really something that he was obviously gearing his game toward, was to compete at the U.S. Open. That's a championship and a tournament that he really had a lot of love for uh, in the latter part of his career. And then, uh, you know, just the kind of the, the determination, the, the intensity that he played with that week was just so just riveting to see as a golf fan and then uh, you know he just stuck with it and, and and then everybody remembers that last putt on 18 at Pinehurst and he he laid up after I believe pushed a drive into the rough he laid up into the fairway and and uh, made the call that he's going to be able to to make his par putt and, and uh -huh. uh, did that held off Phil Mickelson and you know everybody remembers the pose of the fist pump and hugging his caddy mm -hmm. and it was just uh you know, very emotional time for everybody who's a golf fan, especially in this area. Yeah, I was, a, I believe, an 18-footer for par. He <laughs> buried right. on that last hole, which, uh, you know, if any of you guys play golf, that is no guarantee to knock that in. Uh, yeah. A, a tough call there to say, I'm going to lay up in the fairway and get up and down for par, but that's what he did. And uh, another takeaway, uh, just to bring everything full circle, I mean, he out-dueled Phil Mickelson, who mm -hmm. is uh, – you know, one of the best golfers of all time, sure. still looking for his first U.S. Open win. And then a, uh, a young Tiger Woods as well <laughs> was uh, right in the mix uh, coming down the stretch. But, uh, you know, both of those golfers, uh, especially Tiger, mm -hmm. have talked about, you know, Payne being one of uh, one of their mentors uh, when they were coming up on the PGA Tour. Yeah, I think he was he was kind of when he got toward the, the latter part of his career, he really took on the role of a mentor to some of these young guys, but uh, but he wasn't uh, intimidated by them. He wasn't afraid to go out and, you know, out-duel them. He wanted those guys playing at their best, and he wanted to beat them, you know, on the biggest stages, and he did that at Pinehurst. That was, uh, you know, just a really incredible scene. Um, and, uh, you know, Payne was recognized on the PGA Tour easily because of the, <laughs> the outfits he would wear. Um, and, you know, he was big for the area here as well. What did Payne mean for uh, people here in the Ozarks? Well, I think it, it was a case where, you know, Payne was an, a member of the Ozarks. He, he considered this place home. He came back often. His mother uh, lived here. He had siblings that lived here and, or still live here. And, uh, you know, I remember a couple months after, I think it was probably about a month after that U.S. Open, he came back and did a clinic at, uh, at the course that bears his name out off Glenstone. And, mm -hmm. And I remember going out there with my son. He was about four months old at the time, and and uh, everybody was just milling around, waiting waiting for a limo to come up, and and just this regular sedan rolled up, and he hops out of the back seat with the U.S. Open trophy in his arms, and hey everybody, and just walks in, and and just you know had as much time as anybody wanted to spend with them. He signed whatever they wanted, and uh, you know just really made them feel like they were friends with them, and even though it was a, a kind of a touch with greatness. Yeah, um, and then of course a, a few months later he tragically passed away in a plane crash, and you know it just seems like he was taken away uh, I, too soon for a lot of people. But you know he was coming off one of the best uh, seasons of his career, yeah. and you know it's just hard to to process everything um, how it all happened. But for you, uh, how would you uh, talk about Payne's legacy? What is Payne's legacy to you? Uh, you know, he loved the game. He loved the Ozarks, and uh, and he loved playing for his country. You know, he won the the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. and then what, two or three months later, he let, helped lead the Ryder Cup to a win at Brookline, and the, you know the the big uh, Justin Leonard putt is what everybody remembers. But but you know you hear stories about Payne Stewart waking up everyone on his team by. Uh, Blair in the boom box was born in the USA on, on the mornings of the, of the competition. And then, you know, he loved his country. He loved the Ryder Cup. And, uh, and yeah, it's just that's, that's what I'll remember from him is how much he loved the game, how much he wanted to, 
promote the game and push the game and, 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 uh, and for this country. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the U.S. hasn't seen a Ryder Cup member, <laughs> much like Payne since then, and they haven't won a whole lot in the last yeah. 20 years after that either. Um, let's transition to uh, this year's tournament real briefly. Uh, it is on Fox, and we just uh, came out of uh, round one coverage mm -hmm. earlier today. Who's, in your estimation, are, are the favorites to be looking for this week? Who's going to win uh, the 2019 uh, U.S. Open? Boy, I, I've got a group, but I'm not sure I'm confident enough to pick anyone. Uh, you got to look at Brooks Kepka. He won the PGA Championship. He won the U.S. Open last year, uh, won the PGA Championship last year. You know, he's, he seems to really be the kind of guy who gears his game toward the majors. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got that that kind of bulldog mentality that Payne Stewart had. He's just, you know, he doesn't really care about uh, pressure and who's watching and who's challenging. He's just going to go out there and make shots. Uh, a lot of people are picking uh, Justin Thomas to, and uh, Dustin Johnson, those, those guys, to, uh, to have a chance. And I'm a Tiger Woods guy, so yeah. I've always got to have Tiger Woods there. I think uh, having Tiger back at uh, Pebble Beach will be something that's exciting to see. And I think if... I'm not sure his game is where it needs to be to challenge in the U.S. Open, but I, I'd like to see that. Yeah, definitely will be a uh, fun weekend to watch for golf fans, and you can see it throughout the entire week, uh, tomorrow night and the weekend, uh, right here on Ozarks Fox. Jim, thanks so much for coming in today. I wanna, oh. Yeah, appreciate talking about pain and talking about golf. Have Anytime, time. John. All right. We'll be back with more Ozarks tonight right after this.